Our friends, Father Daniel here. Welcome back to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, as per every other day this week, I'm running a little late. Just, uh, it's just the way it is. Um, but a little late. Ah, let's, let's get this one in under the bell. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's do what we can. It's always a great and uh, joyful day uh, to, be, uh, to be celebrating the Mass and, um, and exercising our common priesthood uh, together uh, with the whole school community. Uh, something that enlivens us in faith, opens our hearts to be receptive uh, to God and, and what He wants for us and what He wants of us. And even, yes, strengthens us to, uh, to be able to persevere uh, in charity uh, this day and all our days. So we're doing it together, my friends. Good to be with you this morning. Look forward to celebrating this Mass with you today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Oh. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, O Lord, so that what was promised by the sanctifying power of your word may everywhere be accomplished through the working of the gospel, and that all your adopted children may attain what the testimony of truth has foretold. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night, while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, do not be afraid. Go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Anchia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews. If for a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaints of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles and your own law, see it to yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal, and they all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At Syncria, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, today, and uh, like uh, recently, our days uh, celebrating the Mass uh, with these, um, uh, the continuation of of the reading of the Gospel of John, uh, we're coming towards the end of the farewell discourse. It's chapters 14, 15, and 16 in the Gospel of John. And um, it does, it's really hard to make sense out of each particular passage without some understanding of the whole. I'd rather, I think, give you a sense of uh, how it all works together, uh, especially as we're preparing here uh, to make the, the boldest request possible of God, right? Jesus says here at the end of the passage, amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is the, one of the strongest promises in all of Scripture, and, uh, and we, have to, we have to harness it appropriately. I mean, we really have to get ourselves positioned in order to ask in Jesus' name. And at this time in the church, what we're asking in the name of Jesus is for an outpouring of his own spirit. We want to share in the life of God. I mean, there can't be a bolder request than that. And this is uh, where we are in the, in the church year to be preparing ourselves to receive the Spirit. So I want to give a kind of just a brief synopsis for you to say like how, you know, how it is we go about asking in Jesus' name. How can we see this promise fulfilled, this great promise? We have to say that, uh, of course, Jesus has, has called you. Jesus has summoned you. He's called you to himself to be about his work in the world. This is what we mean. When we say we live a life of eternal purpose, right, great purpose, this is what we mean. We mean that you have been summoned into God's service. You, if you don't want to live a life of great purpose, there are many ways to do that, right? It's like to not live for the purposes of God is to not live a life of eternal purpose. It's, it's to live a life that isn't as consequential as God intends it to be because we're not advancing God's agenda in the world. We're not, we're not realizing our, our full capacities as human beings. Right, so this is the first part, is that Jesus has called us, and he's called us to be about his work in the world. Yeah, we see in the, in the 15th chapter of John's Gospel, chapter before this, Jesus talks about the relationship that he's having with his apostles. And he, and he says, you know, you are the branches, I am the vine. What does it mean? It means that, yeah, we've been summoned into God's service, but we're only sustained, strengthened, nourished in that service. We can, we can in fact, only be about the work of God if we, main, if we remain closely attached to Jesus in a way that a branch, if it's taken off of the vine, withers. But we have been grafted into the vine. So we have, we have life in us, and we have the, the ability to be about the work of God. We, we can ourselves perform works of great love. We can advance God's agenda. We can renew the world if we stay attached to Jesus. Yeah, and that's the relationship that, that we need to have and that we're attempting to foster, right? It's a life of prayer. How, how do we commune with Jesus? How do we have a, a relationship with Jesus if not for prayer? 
and then it's love because the fruition of our life with Jesus and our life of prayer is always love. That's our flourishing. And Jesus shows us throughout uh, the 14th, 15th, and 16th chapters of the Gospel of John that he wants to provide that, he wants to, he wants to make that flourishing possible in us. So he's called us to live the life of great and costly love, and uh, we, he will make it so in us. He will bring about our flourishing in charity. Yeah, that's what, and that's what it means to live on the vine. And then in that context, that's right, I can't see you. Yeah, in, in that context, yeah, it, they're cute. Yeah, in that, in that, they think I can't see them. In, in that context, right, this is, this is where this promise is asked and answered. This is where the promise is fulfilled. Right, so we, 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 if we dedicate ourselves to live the life that Jesus wants for us, then we will have the capacity to, if we continue to have faith in him, such that we can ask the Father for anything in Jesus' name, he will give it to us. Why? Because when we're asking for, for anything in Jesus' name, it means we're asking for what we need to live the lives of great and costly love that he's called us to. And the great promise and the, and the great preparation that we have, the great preparation that we have today is, to, is to, uh, to orient ourselves to the coming of the Spirit, yeah, to the sending of the Spirit. And we prepare our hearts to receive God's own life of love so that we can embody that love for others. And we have to be about that work because that's the work that we've been summoned to. And that's where we find the meaning of our life, the purpose of our life. And, uh, and when we turn to God and ask him for what we need, namely his own spirit to be at work in us and working through us, then he will pour himself out in abundance for us in a love that is stronger than death. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. Our response will be, Lord, have mercy. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Our Mass this morning is offered for Deacon John Hubley, Gennaro El Esposito, Antonia and Tarciso de Carvalho, and Francis Milankovitz.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Accepting compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, How grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Lord, thy kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Oh. 